Hey, I am Mustafa Sharif. Thank you so much for listening to Urbanistica podcast. We talk a lot about child-friendly cities. We talk a lot about cities for women, cities for young girls, cities for adults, and so on. But we don't really talk about the people standing behind the stage, the people that are taking care of the children, parents or caregiver to the kids. Today, I would like to focus on this topic, and I have the pleasure to welcome one more time David Knutson, the one from the Co-working Spaces episode to Urbanistica podcast. Hey, and welcome, David. Thank you so much, Mustafa, for having me again in a fantastic, like, sort of new topic uh, that I'm passionate about as well. Thank you so much for giving your time for us. Absolutely. My pleasure. How are, how are you doing, David? I'm very well, like like anyone else probably know, sitting at home, working, using this fantastic media to communicate with other parents that I'm now doing a lot. Uh, and then again, I have my own son, 17 months on the other side of this <laughs> door, so hopefully we will not hear him. <laughs> well, and we also had a little quickie chat before this episode about the difference between a video call and a phone call and you like it so much to have a video call i mean i definitely believe that i mean you asked me if it's if it's boring um and i just like yes of course it is a bit boring that you can't really see people in the same way but on the other hand i do believe that i do more uh, conversation through video versus actually ringing people and I think that it's not just with me. I read an article about that yesterday that it seemed to be that many people do that, which I think is great because I can I can see you, you can see me instead of just having this via phone. Even this podcast is now a, a vlog sort of thing rather than just a podcast. Yeah, exactly. Two in one. Exactly. Well, David, the question pops up again. How would you like to introduce yourself and tell us about your passion? My name is David. And I am uh, a guy who really sort of living life. I'm, 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 I'm a person that really follows what I believe in. Uh, I try to go on the route of being a nice person just to sort of do things that other things that I should do. In this case, I've say, taken the step, starting my own company for, for a few years back and really sort of living the dream, but not the income. But other than that, it is a fantastic uh, thing. Uh, I'm a family father. I have a son who's 17 months and I am married to a fantastic uh, supporting wife when it comes to taking this huge step of literally saying bye-bye to a salary and jumping on the board of creating a startup. So you're passionate about making your dreams come true. Absolutely, absolutely. And sometimes those dreams can just be like small steps and Sometimes this dream takes me to something else that I never thought I would I would do. Um, and <laughs> just funny thing about like now working with this with this new passion of mine, which is apparently making parenting's life easier, and suddenly finding myself sitting in meetings with a delivery guy that I have a, a meeting with him when he's driving, and we're driving out food to the schools of Stockholm just because he didn't have time for me. And this was before Corona times, but he sat next to me and suddenly I have an experience that I've never had before, which is I've actually been driving out food to school children in five schools in Stockholm. I never thought I'll do that, but that's like, okay, tick the box, I've, I've, I've checked that out. Uh, it's not a passion, but it definitely that passion took me to more knowledge. Uh, super interesting. Let's start with the great topic, the baby stroller in the city. How is it to have a baby stroller and walking in the city? Let's start with the general feelings and reflections. Overall, I think today, I mean, any city in itself are pretty good equipped for um, for us, especially is here, especially here in Sweden. Um, Stockholm in itself are very well. Um, behaved, if you say, call it like that, towards parents in general. Uh, obviously, like if you go to Gamla Stan in Stockholm, well, you have to rethink about a little bit what you're what you're using for for equipment to support your child. But overall, I think it's I think it's a good place, definitely. Did Did you get a new visiting point or function in the city after you got the baby? Places that you visit? I think that I mean we have been we have been obviously more to parks. Uh, you get your you get your coffee. You put that into the cup holder. You stroll around. 
and to get to stroll, it's quite nice not to just see concrete and asphalt and what have you. So finding more parks, um, finding cafes that supports <laughs> parents, which is probably not the easiest things. And is like, because you, you know, we like to hang out, like dads or moms, we like to hang out when we have this kid. But of course, if you're three, four, even five people with the stroller in itself is quite big, there is a lot of cafes that said like, welcome back another time, but not really now. Um, but so, so obviously there is there is um, some some information, some things online where you can find uh, good cafes who support your child, but not everyone does that. But I've done that and I've been sort of commuting with both a lot more than just with the tube, for example. And when you when you say cafes that support parents, in which aspect you mean the space or which kind of support? First of all, there is a support when it comes to the physical, like the actual space. Do you fit not just you, but you have a kid that is often is in a stroller and depending on the age of that child, it could be a baby like a um, uh, high chair. OK, do you have an extra high chair? Do you have can you fit the buggy? And you don't really want to leave your buggy far from you because, again, like there are so many buggies that are stolen in Stockholm. It's unbelievable uh, every year. But at the same time, you have a lock. You can lock it up as long as you watch it. So um, that's one thing to so have the physical space. Secondly, is to have it. Is it possible to change the child? Uh, the nappies need to be changed. You don't really want to do that out in the cafe. You prefer to do that in the, in the, in the bathroom. Quite a lot of restaurants and the cafe actually do not have this very extremely simple product just to fold down or even over the toilet. A nappy bin, it would be fantastic to have in more places like that. Even such a simple thing as a microwave. A lot of families will come in and it's like, excuse me, do you have a microwave? Can I, I just need to like heat this food for my child. Some people get a bit like, no, I don't really have other things to do. And some people don't want you to do that because they want you to purchase something in the shop. But it's like, OK, but if it's a tiny baby, you don't really have anything that suits for that reason. So there are good cafes that, that supports feeding, <laughs> the unfeeding part uh, and, and also the physical space. What is your reflection when someone in the cafe tells you, oh, no, sorry, we don't have that? But I would say that most there are different ways of how you've been approached. There are a bit like get out we don't want to have you here and there are other people that are very accommodating and saying like this is fantastic but I'm, i mean unfortunately we don't uh, some people say well, if you don't have a microwave well we can put it in hot water all right good then you don't have a microwave but you've actually done what you can do so that's fine uh, or the, otherwise we'll have to solve it in, a, in another way but i've been part of both myself and my wife being part of sort of going to one cafe no, thank you. You're too many people. Can't accommodate you. Go on to the next one. So we have learned to sort of figure out before, like checking on the websites, going on Google Maps. Do they accommodate? What does what the, what type of facilities is there? Not that much on the road to get to the place, but actually, what is the place that we're going to go for? So this limits a lot of your movement in the city and the places you visit, right? I would say so. I mean, obviously, like cafes is a big part, but also museums, for example, like there are so many fantastic museums that are really, really good accommodating for, for children in Djurgården, for example. That is fantastic. I mean, you can do the walks, you can jump in, in there. And obviously, that's there are free things and there are things that are not free. So in a way, it limits you. Um, it's basic. They definitely take me into a new new step in life. Uh, for sure. When it comes to the public spaces, do you find the same unaccessibility or you feel very comfortable? I feel very comfortable with that. I think that it's as a parent, you need to sort of do a little bit of research about what products you need to have. And product is mainly the, the stroller itself. Are you close to the city center or do you live in Gamla Stan? Are you close to the forest and you like to do walks? What kind of wheels are there? Um, so all of these things that I basically didn't know myself, I have realized that, and a lot of people that I speak to as well are not 
uh, they're not born in Sweden. They actually got a kid abroad and then came here and like, whoa, we have something called snow. Uh, all right, we can't. We have to change the buggy and and what have you. So um, I think it totally depends on what products you have, but. If you just are kitted for that, it's not a problem to get onto a bus. I'll come back to that, but it, it, no problem to go into uh, to the tube, the trams, or we live just slightly outside of Södermalm. We can take a boat, which is fantastic. So it's not, there is something called a Stockholm measurement in, 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 the, in the width of a stroller, which means it needs to have a specific width. If it's too wide, you can't get to the doors. And especially if you then have a, a two kids or if you have a twins, you need to really think about that before getting the right product. But definitely it could be, you, you talked about like limiting the movements before. And I must say though, I mean, even if you, there is normally, normally it's, it lifts pretty much everywhere. And it clearly states that you are not allowed to go on the escalator with the, with the buggy. It's not, it's not okay because it is definitely nothing to recommend but sometimes when you stand there in line for a very, 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 very slow lift that sometimes doesn't smell that fantastic, to be honest, um, you sometimes just skip the rule and, and, and you go up or you just have to add that to your travel time. So it hasn't really limited, but it definitely have increased the movement time. Yeah. And now, and now when, when you're going out, are you thinking a lot that, okay, I should walk because I have a baby stroller instead of taking the metro or driving. How do you decide your transportation? I would say like I'm probably even more aware of it now during during COVID-19 times, which I mean, normally we would e we will easily take the, the commuter system uh, without any problem. I don't really think about like before or, or that before baby or with baby. During Corona times, we are very much not moving that much and if we are moving we're actually using a car and if we don't then we take the boat do, do you feel free when you walk on the sidewalk in the streets or you feel that you're it's too tight in general i'm married to to a british woman and compared to the uk sweden is a sweden is fantastic when it comes to like sidewalks and widths and again like swedes are real we like to sort of keep separated even before covid19 um, so we have our our path. There is, that's not really a big problem. I don't think so. And during summer, there's a lot of streets that sort of shut down for uh, for cars and open up. So, uh, uh, what do you call them? Summer pathways, basically, which is fantastic. So no, I don't think it's it's sort of. I don't think it's No, I don't think it's limiting at all. Actually, that's great to hear. Do you also bike with your baby or no? Oh yeah, I do. Um, we bike with our baby. We don't have a bike. We don't put him in, in the back of, of the bike, um, but we put him in so far. We have a, a specific stroller, a running stroller and bike stroller that we connect in the back, which he loves, absolutely loves um, <laughs> to go in. And he's like, yay, because it's a speed thing and he loves it. Um, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I mean, he loves it. And I, I feel pretty, obviously, depending on where you are. But if you're if you're biking around with that, that's not a problem, and I, I feel safe. And I see that you got so much knowledge, experience about all the different things related to baby stroller baggies <laughs> and so. On. Well, you, yeah, not, you became super expert. <laughs> it's one thing of being a parent, and obviously, like to to start up, initiate a, a brand, or focusing on the parenting journey. Obviously, it's going to be like I'm a I'm a total geek when it comes to like tires and wheels and <laughs> what kind of buggy do you need for what and, and there is a, it's such a mahousey world that people like move into. Yeah, there's it just is a lot of a, a lot of things. But I think you're addressing one thing that you normally do not talk about is is what happens with you you and your family. What kind of movement do you do? And if it's one thing that's sort of it's not limiting, but it's a bit annoying is that when you're getting a kid like my wife has experienced is if you're pregnant a lot of people are very accommodating like they get up and they let you sit and, and what have you which is fantastic but when you get the stroller obviously depending on when you're going in the city with the stroller this sort of like you are in the way feeling has occurred quite a bit 
So I'll come back to that later, but about very much to show the respect to people to, to because sometimes you don't want to be there, but you are there anyway. Uh, sometimes you don't want to just have your baby in a baby carrier. You just want it to be able to fall asleep. Just because you have a child doesn't mean that you sort of, no, no, stay out of city center or whatever. So I think that if people just could be a little bit more respectful about uh, that a pram or the stroller takes a little bit of space, that would be fantastic. Yeah, exactly. This is what I wanted to talk with you about as well, that the relationship between you and the people around you. So uh, whose responsibility to show respect, to move, to get, to give more space. So it's, it's super interesting. And I would love that we highlight this more. Yeah. I mean, more I mean, I, I would say that it's, when I say show respect, it's not just the people around the buggy. It's absolutely the parent, the parent itself. Just because you have a stroller, you're not like, yes, I'm here, boom. If the bus driver tells you there is already two, ba two uh, strollers and then there is an elderly person who has a, has a walk, uh, walking frame, well, get, don't get on the bus. You have chosen to go on the bus if it's full. Don't even try to get on. Don't become angry or stressed or whatever. You have to find another way. And going back to what you just mentioned before, do I bike? Yes, I do. And I actually bike more just to sort of not have this problem by if, if a bus comes and you only have three spaces in the bus for, for, for the products, then you just try to skip that and, and bike. And... Um, then I think Stockholm has a, a lot of good bike paths, uh, but that could obviously be better. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. But I think that's good. So, David, tell me about the startup, the crazy idea. <laughs> the crazy, the crazy when, idea. What? When did you, when did you get it exactly? The idea that you decide, okay, no, I will start this. I sat actually on a, in an innovation dinner in the fantastic island of, of Gotland during something called Almedalsveckan in 2018. And we sat and discussed this with one of these accelerator programs called Sting in Stockholm. And we talked about circular economy. And uh, I thought that there and then, because me and my wife were trying to get pregnant. So I thought like, of course, there needs to be a service to actually get access to the products that I will need for my lifestyle that supports the upbringing of my child as a service. Can I subscribe to that? So quickly Google that and realize like, no, there is great services, great companies out there. They do this for clothing in, in like Sweden, Denmark, Norway. And there are several of these people that do that, but not when it comes to the sort of the more, more expensive items like the stroller or the baby carrier or the car seat that you need to change after after a year. And why do I need a car seat if I live in Stockholm and I and I just subscribe to a to a, a car sharing program, for example. So there and then there and then it's like if it doesn't exist, hey, why not do it yourself. So I, I started sort of investigating more and more about the market because I didn't know anything about the, the baby market, and, which is a massive market. I can imagine. Uh, I mean, there are 30,000 children just in Stockholm being born every year. Wow. And uh, in average, in average, you spend 20,000 sec on gear on the first year as a parent in average, which is then, I mean, you can do the math quite quickly. And there is obviously you can buy it brand new. You can go on and um, get it online and block it or may Facebook marketplace, or you get it from friends, family or whatever. Apparently will be a, a fourth option, which means that you can subscribe to products that you need when you need it. You only pay for when you're needing it. It will be delivered to your house. It will be removed when you're not using it. We clean it, we maintain it, we recondition it and we put it back into circular use. Because a lot of these products are great, they're fantastic, but sometimes they sort of, you don't really use the product as much as you could do, uh, even if there's a clear secondhand market. So we wanted to try to sort of, to, to hold on to that uh, and uh, design this service. So that's what we're about to do now. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. David, but why babies products so expensive? 
That is a fantastic good question. There are um, like any products like compared to cars or whatever anything, there are obviously products that are cheaper um, with sometimes good quality, somewhat less quality. And there are these uh, high level brands that are putting more emphasis on the circular product development uh, and stuff like that. And also an image. And Stockholm is a lot about image. Like wearing a suit is the same thing. Like what is a suit? What does it tell you? What is this type of brand on the stroller tells your surroundings? I have two people that I have spoken sp spoken to that has unfortunately taken a loan to to get access to the right buggy for the area that I live in and for the people that I hang out with, which is a sad story, but it's also part of reality. So it's not just about getting getting access, but it's also making it more accessible for people that can't like, I mean, something you can spend 20,000 on a brand new buggy, just a buggy. And not everyone can do that. And this gives you the possibility to get access to products that you do you want and, and also to take a huge uh, step towards being more circular. Yeah. Uh, but F, I mean, there are different price tags on, on them, of course. Yeah, are you going to buy products and then circulate them or what's the idea and where are you going to store the products that are not being used yeah i mean if i would buy them that would be way too easy uh, <laughs> because, <laughs> <laughs> because then it would be just me being another reseller for any of these really like big brands who turn over is, is massive so i've been working with as in my previous episode, I've been working quite a lot with, with, with office development and, and uh, with the co-working spaces and also a lot about innovation. And working as a consultant within innovation has really highlighted the need of the big companies needs to look to the sustainable development goals of 2030. These goals that a lot of, a lot of nations have signed to be part of and we, they have to do something. To be part of the future for the future generation that wants to, to consume or use, these companies need to take a larger responsibility. And we offer them the opportunity of taking this goal, the, taking this step already tomorrow by not buying them from the producer, but actually offering them to own the products for the entire time that they're using it. So we get access to the product. We are using the uh, we we are um, providing that to um, to a user. We take the product back. We recondition it in our own warehouse, where we also go store the products and we reconditioning all of these products and safety check them, which is a huge part, obviously, because it's it's your child. It's so super important. And then we have a communication all the time with the producer. This means not only can they these products la last longer? But lasting longer also means that the producer actually will earn more money over time, because we can't forget that to be it's called circular economy. It's an economy. It actually makes it uh, worthwhile for the producer to do this. But this is not the easiest thing uh, to do. Um, but I, I I'm so happy in the conversation that I have with some of the producers that are big brands in Europe who really understands this, that they have to take this, this step to complete the innovation uh, uh, so, so SDG goals. Yeah. Okay. And what, what are the challenges that you're facing now, especially you're in the early phases, right? I would say like, I mean, there are so many, uh, there, is so, there is so many, like the, the vision is massive, but you sort of have to reduce yourself to thinking of what's the MVP, what's the, what is the minimal you need to try it? So we're trying at this out with 25 test families at the moment, which is great. Um, and they can help us to develop sort of everything, everything from what should we offer, in what way should we offer, what kind of insurance do you need? How is it to be a user rather than a consumer? Because you don't consume the buggy, it's not yours. But if it's not yours, how will you as a user actually use it? Will you, I mean, there's so many questions, but then the test pilot, we test that towards the user, we test it towards the producer. Um, because in the, end of the, in the end of the day, the better products that the producer can make that has better thinking about the circularity, 
that users um, good methods and not unlike any child work or whatever you need, but that you, you put a lot of money into a buggy that potentially in, in the warehouse would cost 50 or 60,000. But through a subscription model, you can lower that, you can get access and you can, they could live longer. But as, as any startup, the financial part is, is one thing, obviously. But I sort of, I want to try the best funding you can get is the money from the users, obviously. And that's where we are now. So we're going to start this up now by having paying clients to, to test this and to have a close collaboration both with the user and the producer. I believe you're going to integrate this with an application. Yeah, everything will be done digitally. Uh, so you as, you as user can have uh, any, any phone or laptop and you can then do what are you subscribing to? How much is that per month? What can you update? What can you change? Yeah, I mean, all of those things. And obviously that in itself is a big job. And if you just go on any sort of e-commerce site today, they're perfect for delivery, purchase, send, done. Here, we're trying to create a platform that is subscription. Your monthly fee can go up or down. You have one shipment and then you have a running subscription cost, and then I come and collect it. There is so many steps there, are, and yeah. there are so many new things that hasn't been done before as we haven't really found a good solution. So we're building it ourselves. How, how big is the team that dealing with all these different steps? Well, it's me uh, <laughs> that are uh, 100% on this. And then I have, I've had the honor to have Hyper Island people just uh, both existing students to create everything about the content strategy for apparently it's been fantastic. And then I have uh, former uh, Hyper Island students that are now consultant for me. And then I have other people that I am using. And But the funny thing is when you're starting a new thing like this and people seem to like it, a lot of people wants to be on, be, be on board, which is fantastic. It's great to be to have that. But then it's like, okay, how do you what kind of resource do you need and for what? Um, so um, we are, we're literally three people working on this at the moment, um, including my my dear wife, who's a copywriter and, and working with the marketing. I mean, it's, it's such it's such a fun process. It really is to start something from scratch. I can see it on your face when you're talking <laughs> now. I can see the love and the energy. It is the love and energy because I also, I mean, I'm, I'm one of them. I mean, I'm a parent, he's 17 months, he's, he's sick today. Okay, he can't go to preschool, he stays at home, what happens, have to go out, beautiful weather, ba -da -ba -da -dum. so I'm living and I would love to have this opportunity myself. Uh, so that's obviously a, a driver. Yes, that's amazing. And David, I would love also to talk with you about some more about feelings and the situation because what we know, me, I, I, I don't have any kids yet. Yet. But what I hear from uh, some people that, oh, your life going to change. Just forget about freedom. You will give all your life to, to your baby. I know it's different to the different people, but now we're talking about the topic. So would you mind to share with us? What do you think about it? Did your life really change? And now it's a kind of, oh, my God, I don't have any hobbies anymore. I'm, I'm dying, you know, I'm suffering. <laughs> <laughs> to start up a brand new business at the same time as you have a kid. Uh, those two in itself is to bring up something parallel. Uh, they're both needs, food, love, care. So maybe that, that that's really like, it's, it's maybe not, not that I recommend super duper much, but I, I still do it and I love it. Well, of course your life changed, but it's also, as you just said, like if everything is, everyone is different. We have, we have a lot of friends and, and acquaintances that we have that have made the decision to let the child sort of steer the life. Um, and that's the only thing that they do, and, and which is, that's their choice, it's fantastic. But you really see the difference in, in, in relationship when you have friends and family, and suddenly you get a kid, that you're sort of becoming a cocoon. And then you realize that the same setup as you have, you would think that your friends would do the same but they sometimes they don't do that. And so I, we really see difference in, in, in people that we hang out with. Uh, obviously that it's, it's more and more, you hang out more and more with the people that have children in the same situation, which have no problem about talking about poo and food and school and what have you. But um, it's, it is, 
we haven't we haven't made the decision sort of that, that Albin will steer our life, but it definitely affects definitely affects when it comes to like when is he going to sleep, when is he going to eat. The kid needs to routine. So I would say the routine has helped us have a routine. Punch, okay, sleep, fantastic, two hours, work, boom, great. Next, eat, sleep, food, sort of like that. So of course, it steers you, but if you don't let it be overwhelming it won't but this is this is great things is now we're talking about parent like parent being parents but i mean this is great things to talk about with with your partner before actually getting the kid don't i mean it would it definitely helps to talk about this before how much communication do you need in your life in order to establish this freedom safety like with your partner with the baby with the people around you we, we we are in this uh, already when you were talking to the people in the cafe and so on. How much do you need to communicate your feelings, the situation? You don't really realize how much you do it until you speak to someone that is not even part of it or interested in 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 that. It's so funny when you realize yourself you're sitting and talking about it as the, like this is the only thing in life. Uh, but then there is someone who's maybe a bit younger and like, I don't really care what you're talking about. And then you're like, okay, I'm sorry. I like, we have to change subject to something completely different. <laughs> uh, I've, that, yes, you've been part of that many, many times. Um, but in communication, of course, it's communication. You need to, Alban is almost on the age right now. You have to sort of watch your mouth, what you say. Uh... He will repeat it. Oh, I mean, he can. I mean, be, because my wife is British, it's gonna it's a split. So he says kaka in Swedish, and he says boss. <laughs> it's sort of like it's really. <laughs> he doesn't say papa. He says daddy. Ah. So it, uh, yeah, everything is about communication. It, it really is at all times. Interesting. Super interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, David, if I ask you now two quick question, if you close your eyes and I ask you what. Do you hate most in the city when you're out with a baby stroller? When it's uh, no lift. Okay. Uh, which happens, and if they have lift, it takes ages. And what do you love in the city when you're out with a baby? Again, we have a lot of space. There is a lot of parks, which is I know that Stockholm Start is really like emphasizing the, emphasizing this, and I think it's great that they are doing that. So there's so many parks, there's so many playgrounds. You just you can just pick, which is I think is absolutely great. Mm. Oh, that's great to hear. So if you have a time machine and you go back in time and you're allowed to change one thing related to architecture and urban planning, what will you change? The question can also be going forward or um, but again, I would try to remove as much of the cars as possible. And by doing so, hide them underneath the ground, like add, it's almost like put the trains on top and the cars below. Don't let the cars steer the city. And I know this is a future vision of a lot of people, especially with car sharing programs and AI and, and what have you. But if that, would be, if, if that would be something that people thought before, that would obviously be great today. And what is the thing that you're going to add to the city if you're allowed to? <laughs> uh, it's funny like when you think about it like yes i would say like again the, the car thing is an important part but i wouldn't mind if there is there are there are kids parks but it would be great if it has a sort of a, a little bit more to adults so i'm not it's, it's weird, <laughs> weird to call an adult park but <laughs> but it's it, it is definitely like a parent park like is what, what is it? What is it that can be be combined? There are great things about in retail, with, which I have thought about. Like, kids section is close to something else, and we both can have happy happiness for both. There, there is so much that you can add to playgrounds, which is keep them there for longer, make the kids love them, but at the same time add more for the actual parent. Yeah, and I'm thinking now about the Leo Lekland, the indoor playground that's uh, both for adults and babies. Yes. Are you thinking more than this should be free and out and accessible in the city outdoor, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, for for example, like there is Stockholm has a lot of outdoor gym. In my what I when I think about it, I can't really see that many outdoor gyms that are close to kids parks. 
and sometimes you can combine the two. Uh, in some, I don't know, really know how, but I, 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 I sort of would it's, like to see it's that. It's our problem to fix it, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I mean, definitely, definitely, yeah. in some way. I mean, I, I, there is there is fast food burger joints out there who has playgrounds outside of their restaurants with soft sort of rubber floor, and then they have tree houses. But they have sort of combined the food, the eating part with that, and the many other people. Do that as well but if you could do that to actually outdoor playgrounds yeah in some way and this is something we have actually spoken to um, with some friends that this would be fantastic if, if this was successful yeah that's a great point thank you so much david you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> well it was really great to talk to you as well too much inspiration in this episode <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it, it is it is a you become a bit of a geek um you become a bit of geek about the pa- being a parent being a child like what diapers you just and i mean it's, it's a massive world it's like getting married it's the same thing there you get it, it's a it's a bubble but it's it, it definitely affects and I'm, I'm i'm glad you highlight this uh here because it, it will affect the urban planning of the future and getting more more green into a city getting more accessible for for uh, for buggy stroller or what have you but one thing that is maybe tricky for you guys to solve is also the the, the communication between the non parents and the parents which yeah. al- always can increase and be better yeah of course of course and i'm so happy that you share with us Honestly, everything you you have in heart and mind and your experience, it's very valuable. Thank you so much, David. My pleasure. And I'm afraid now to ask you what is the next step for you, because every time I ask you, something different pops up. <laughs> no one knows what is the... I don't know if you're going to start one more startup. So, but okay, I, I need to take it. So what is the next step for you, David? What is one step? Well, it's funny that, yes, I am starting another startup. But um, I do that to support, apparently, uh, when it comes to the reconditioning. I believe that reconditioning will be part of, of increasing uh, the interest for, for um, circular economy. There are so many things out there that can be, if you just take care of it and update it, you can send it back out. We don't really find this service. So we are we're a couple of guys that are doing this. So I will be sort of, a, I will be a customer to my own startup. Uh, that would recondition. So uh, it's a parallel track. So that's my next step. The other step is to make sure I can deliver products out to my test families uh, because I know a lot of them are becoming physically bigger and are <laughs> soon there to be parents. Nice. There are many families listening to to the podcast. The, are they able to be part of the test families or you already selected the families now? We have selected uh, a lot of them already now, but if they are uh, if they're quick, we have a few spots still open to be part of the uh, part of this. Absolutely. So just let me know and send send me an email at hey at parently dot se. Let me know because yeah. you're more than welcome. Small question: Is it only in Stockholm, or even you deliver to Westeros, let's say Skåne? Skåne, very good, uh, very good question. Uh, we are starting in Stockholm's LAN uh, and providing that. But obviously the next ter- the next step will be to to expand the business uh, prefer like uh, for and foremost in the Nordic countries. But I mean, hey, it's a, it's a big need out there. But right now Stockholm's LAN. Yes, yes. I wish you all the good luck with all your steps. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mustafa. <laughs> well, David, how would you like to summarize the conversation and reflections and three takeaway messages? I think I come back to to the thing I mentioned before about no matter where you are, no matter where you are in your life, in the situation you're in, always show respect to one another. Obviously, now during Corona times, it's even more important, but always trying to do that because you never know what situation the other person is in. So um, that's a, a that's a key thing. I am on the path to make sure that there is a road for being a sustainable user rather than a consumer. And you can already do that today in so many different branches, industries. And I think it's good that everyone sort of think about how you consume, but you can actually use. And thirdly, obviously, you need to go and check out parently.se because you need to be part of this journey. And I would like to, to, to have as many people as possible part of the journey. 
That's amazing. Thank you so much, David. And now three hashtags. Three hashtags. Apparently life circular economy and access economy thank you so much david for giving your time to urbanistica podcast thank you for having me and thank you so much for listening to urbanistica podcast please follow instagram and subscribe the youtube channel for live talk if you have a good story that makes our city smarter please contact me urbanistica is being produced in collaboration with landscapes like it a company working with landscape architecture and urban design based in stockholm I am Mustafa Sharif. Keep up the good work. Keep loving cities.